Hey, Donna Lewis here, Breathe Life Ministries. And I just want to help you get your day off on the right foot. We are going to uh, have an interactive live devotional today. And uh, I just want to invite you all right now to participate. We're going to be getting into a lot of different scriptures this morning. But the whole focus is going to be on dropping those toxic excuses and walking in freedom. The truth is freedom. And even though it can hurt, we're, we feel shame, we feel guilt, um, we don't like the feeling of admitting when we're wrong because it hurts our pride. It hurts that um, persona that we want to project to the world. But in the end, when we actually go ahead and 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 swallow that bitter pill of truth we're set free we're set free and healing begins so that's what we're going to be talking about today we're going to be talking about dropping the excuses embracing the truth and walking in freedom I want to encourage you right now to go ahead and like and share this live cast. I want to invite you to participate actively and vibrantly in the discussion. Um, I love it when you participate because it uh, just creates a dynamic flow of conversation. You are going to see things that I don't see. And when you um, comment and share those perceptions and insights, it, it again sets people free. It ministers. So please do interact with this um, live devotional discussion. I am going to get in here real quick and there we go. And I just need to turn this down so that I can see your comments. So we're set to go here. Um, I have the ability to see your comments. There is a little bit of a delay. Again, I'm on Zoom so that I can um, share my screen with you. And, uh, and that way you can actually see the scriptures that I'm going to be going into. I'm also going to be sharing uh, some insights from an article uh, on the subject that is extremely helpful. And I cannot bring you on to the Zoom call. This is a live cast through Facebook Live, but you can still participate in the discussion through your comments and I will be watching for those comments and responding to them as they come through. So now, without further ado, I want to share my screen with you. And let's see here. So let's go to 1 John 1 9. Now I am using um, the U version uh, mybible.com app uh, on my computer. And uh, this is where I get all my daily devotionals. Uh, when I am doing um, research for things like the Ezekiel Bible study and today, this is my go-to and I love it because I can change the translation. Watch this. Here we go into the New Living Translation. And now I'm going to go into 1 John, our key scripture. I'm scrolling, scrolling, scrolling. 
Here we go. One, and here we go. Our key scripture here today, and I'm going to blow this up so you can see it, is here. If we claim to have no sin, we are only fooling ourselves and not living in the truth. But if we confess our sins to him, referring to Jesus Christ, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all wickedness. If we claim we have not sinned, we are calling God a liar and showing that his word has no place in our hearts. When I titled this Drop the Excuses, it came out of my devotional this morning. And I'm, I'm just going to read you a quote from that. In my devotions today, it read this, God's grace and mercy are available to the sinner, not to the ones who make excuses for their sins. When we look at 1 John 1, 9, we see that it's difficult for human beings to admit that we are sinners. Let's take a look at Genesis, the very first sin ever committed. Genesis 3, Adam and Eve in the garden, and they have betrayed the trust of God. They've listened to the lying voice of the serpent, they have eaten from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. And when confronted by God, their loving father, what takes place? God asks Adam, have you eaten from the tree whose fruit I commanded you not to eat? The man replied, it was the woman you gave me who gave me the fruit and I ate it. It was the woman you gave me who gave me the fruit and I ate it. Then the Lord God asked the woman, what have you done? The serpent deceived me, she replied. That's why I ate it. Then the Lord God said to the serpent, <laughs> because you have done this, you are cursed more than all animals, domestic and wild. And we know the end of the story. We see here the first sin followed by the first excuse. Let's look now at John 3. And we're going to scroll on down to verse 18. There is no judgment against anyone who believes in him. He's speaking of himself. But anyone who does not believe in him has already been judged for not believing in God's one and only son. And the judgment is based on this fact. God's light came into the world but people loved the darkness more than the light 
for their actions were evil. All who do evil hate the light and refuse to go near it for fear their sins will be exposed. But those who do what is right come to the light so others can see that they are doing what God wants. The first response Adam and Eve had to their sin was to hide. They hid in the shrubs. They didn't want to be seen by God. They didn't want their sin exposed. Well, you can't hide from God. And God found them. But then when he found them and he confronted them, they had tried to hide again through their excuses. The word of God teaches us that all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. Every one of us falls short. Every one of us sins. God has provided a way of healing from the damage of sin. But in order to experience the healing, we have to do one thing, and that is allow it to be fully exposed. When we allow excuses to shield us and hide us, it only perpetuates the damage that has been done you see, excuses are deceptive. They provide an illusion of safety and security. We, we tease ourselves into believing that we're safe behind the excuse. But we're only fooling ourselves. We believe we're insulating ourselves by the excuse from the pain of shame and guilt. What Jesus said is, we're already guilty. <laughs> we're already judged. We're not fooling anyone but ourselves. And we're not escaping judgment. In fact, we're digging ourselves in deeper. We are retreating deeper into the darkness, which is farther and farther away from God, who is light. We shift the responsibility onto someone else. But the fact is, we are already judged. We are already condemned. It does not remove the judgment of God by saying it's someone else's fault. Again, it only serves to perpetuate the bondage that we are in to that sin 
that violation of relationship excuses continue to hold us in our prison cell and the dark truth is that we are death row inmates to those excuses in romans paul teaches the wages of sin is death we are all condemned we are all death row inmates the good news is when we stop making the excuses and stop hiding behind them we receive a key to unshackle us and unlock that prison door and what is that key it is the truth it is the truth the truth breaks bondage the truth is light exposing everything so that nothing is hidden and there is no longer anything to hide it advances trust it advances freedom it heals it restores and it is eternal it hurts But again, Paul in his wisdom said, it's a pain that leads to life. It does hurt. It's called remorse. It's called repentance. It's called empathy. It's called love. When we experience love, we don't want the object of our love to ever be in pain. And when we acknowledge that we, A, love this person whom we've hurt, we feel pain that we've hurt them. God experiences heartbreak god is perfect love and when we violate our relationship with him we we do damage to him we hurt him we hurt his heart and until we can feel empathy for god's experience at our injury of our relationship with him. We, we can't experience the beauty of his forgiveness of that injury, his washing it away. You see, there's no longer anything to hide when we come into the truth because God's forgiveness washes it all away and it is as though it has never happened it's complete it's total let's go to
Mark 2.17. One of the first things that I resonated with when I read this quote, God's grace and mercy are available to the sinner, not to the ones who make excuses for their sin. It reminded me of an exchange that Jesus had with the Pharisees. And it was uh, shortly after God, Jesus healed the man, the paralytic that was brought down through the roof. Uh, Jesus was holding a Bible study in uh, this person's house and the room was just full to the brim and the crowds were going out the door and uh, there was no way for uh, this man to be brought in to Jesus to be healed. And so they, he, the, the, the man's friends carried him up to the roof of the house, tore a hole in the roof, and then lowered the man down to Jesus to be healed. And uh, Jesus looked at the man and said, your sins are forgiven. Stand and pick up your mat and walk. And the Pharisees were really irritated with Jesus for saying this because they knew that only God can forgive sins. And so Jesus said, well, to prove to you that the Son of Man has authority on earth to forgive sins, he turned to the paralyzed man and said, stand up, pick up your mat and go home. The man jumped up, grabbed his mat and walked through the stunned onlookers on home. So there was a very heated exchange that took place from the um, from the um, from the Pharisees following this event. And they they went on to further accuse Jesus of, of being corrupt because he was hanging out with tax gatherers and and uh, notorious sinners. And Jesus overheard them grumbling about this, and he said the following. This is found in Mark 2, verse 17. Healthy people don't need a doctor. Sick people do. I have come to call not those who think they are righteous, but those who know they are sinners. The Pharisees were operating under an illusion that they had nothing to feel guilty about. The people Jesus was walking with and investing in knew they were sinners in need of a savior. They were, they were ill sick with sin and needed a doctor. They needed healing. I read in an article in, uh, at a website called drpsychological.com and this particular article was outlining 13 different excuses that people use to escape responsibility for an infraction of relationship, a violation of relationship and trust. And they opened their discussion with this quote. A sincere apology can soothe feelings, 
restore trust and instill healing in a damaged relationship. This is what God is calling us into, the healing and restoration of relationship that's been violated by our failure, our failure to walk in truth, to walk in love, to walk in light. And the very beautiful element of this is when we walk in truth before God, we walk in truth before everyone around us. The same honesty we bring before God, we bring before others as well. So that when we violate the sanctity of relationship, with one another. We don't make excuses or half hearted fake apologies. We bring to the table truth and empathy and sincere repentance for the failure in the relationship. And then our relationship has birthed healing, restoration, trust. I want to encourage you today by just going into some of these excuses with you. This is, these are examples of what a false apology looks like. Minimizing, I was just kidding. I was just trying to help. I was just playing devil's advocate. Minimizing excuses claims that the hurtful behavior is really harmless and didn't do that much damage. And again, how often do we do this with God? You know, I want to back up here a little bit. And I, I, I talk a lot about narcissism at Breathe Life Ministries. And, and here's the painful truth, my friends. We are all narcissistic. I think we can take Romans 3.23 that says, For all have sinned and fallen short. We could almost rewrite that into a translation that says, for all our narcissists <laughs> and have fallen short of the glory of God. Narcissism is really nothing more than pathological selfishness, pathological self-deception. And we all go there when we determined to shield ourselves from the pain of our failed actions in relationships and choose to walk in the deception that it isn't all that bad. What God is asking from us is a sincere apology free from excuses, free from the shifting of blame, where we take our actions on ourselves and admit that what we have done 
is wrong. We don't enter into these false excuses, minimizing. I was just kidding. I was just trying to help. I'm sorry you think I did something wrong. I'm sorry you think I'm a bad person. <laughs> I'm sorry if something I said offended you. I've already said I'm sorry a dozen times. How much more do you want from me? I regret you feel upset. I probably shouldn't have done that. You know I meant well. I never would have hurt you. You know I'm sorry. You know I didn't mean it. Well, I guess I owe you an apology. I'll apologize if you want me to. Well, I suppose because your mom wants me to apologize. Or the yeah buts. I was just telling the truth. I just couldn't help myself. I was born this way, right? Um, this is a really great article and I will post it um, on Breathe Life Ministries Facebook page so y'all can uh, take a look at it. And I will also post it on this event page so you can refer to it. Let's just take a look at what a real apology looks like before we close. A real apology contains no conditions or minimizes what was done. It shows that the person apologizing understands and empathizes with the offended person's experience and feelings. It shows remorse. It offers a commitment to avoid repeating the hurtful behavior. When Jesus looked at the woman caught in adultery, he said, go, and sin no more. It offers to make amends or restitution if it's appropriate. So in other words, if um, you stole something, you offer to pay for it. If you damaged something, you offer to replace it. I, I pray that this provides you some much needed insight. God loves you. God's heart breaks for the broken relationship he has with you right now. God wants you to come into the light with him and experience every blessing he has to pour out on you. Drop the excuses and experience authentic freedom and restoration and healing today. I love you and I will see you back here tomorrow when we go through the book of Ezekiel, we're gonna be doing a huge survey on the book of Ezekiel tomorrow. We're gonna to cover six chapters uh, in one day. Uh, so we're gonna be zooming through chapters four through 10 tomorrow on the Ezekiel Bible study. Um, if you haven't yet, uh, click like and subscribe so that you can uh, be notified whenever Breathe Life Ministries is on the air and has a new video or a new interactive devotional for you to participate in. Um, with Facebook, you just hit the like Breathe Life Ministries page and you'll get those notifications and follow. Um, I have events uh, regularly scheduled and you can also um, 
join those events and then you'll be notified immediately when the event begins. Again, God bless. Pray this blesses you. Um, send me. Oh, and if you are watching this on the recast, please continue the conversation. Go ahead and post your comments, post your insights, post your prayer requests, and I will respond to them. And again, your comments minister to others. God bless and we'll see you back here tomorrow.